All right, so welcome to video two in the study of William of Ockham. This is part of the Medieval Philosophy series, which you can find the playlist for on my channel page. The first video I just uploaded was on William of Ockham's metaphysics through the razor, the idea that um, if you've not heard anything else about William of Ockham, you probably have at least heard about the razor, the idea that the simplest explanation is usually the best one. But the other thing that he's become known for lately, he's almost had like a, a rebirth, a second life, through his rediscovery by the analytic philosophers who find in him a really rigorous and impressive, not to mention interesting, logical system, especially within the context of what he's doing within the medieval tradition. And that's going to be the subject of this video. Uh, this will be an introduction to his logic. Now, that's a big topic, so it will be several videos, but I just want to give you an introduction. If you'll take a look at this um, tree structure, maybe pseudo tree structure to sort of look at the hierarchy by which he understood that, you know, logic, of course, deals with syllogisms. He calls it the science of syllogisms. And syllogisms, of course, deal with sentences. Uh, the most famous example is trying to determine whether we can find out if Socrates is mortal, because we know Socrates is a man, we know all men are mortal, so therefore we must be able to arrive at the conclusion that Socrates is also mortal. And therefore, a syllogism, which is sort of the primary um, logical interest of the medieval tradition, is a uh, syllogism as understood as dealing with a set of sentences. Uh, but sentences themselves decompose down to terms, and terms can be of two different varieties. You have the categorimatic terms, which um, have an independent signification, and then you have the sin categorimatic terms, which don't have an independent signification, but rather provide some modification um, either to the categorimatic terms or to other sin categorimatic terms. Now, examples of sin categorimatic terms are words that you probably recognize from modern logic as being more like relate uh, um, the operators, uh, words like and words like or, because, not. These are not really independent meanings within the sentence so much as they're modifications of other independent meanings. And therefore, the meaning uh, that you find with a categorimatic term is that its meaning is, as a term, is fixed, right? And a, a term, therefore, is going to have a relation to a thing out there in the world um, and the relation that's going to have is one of signification. A term is going to signify an X if we can verify um, if if we can verify that term of that x, so finding it, it's something like a verification principle regarding the relation of a term to an x out there in the world, and um, this can be either sort of virtually or uh, potentially, or it can be in actuality. For example, something which is not actually read, like this board, for example, it could be read. So therefore, the uh, signification um, of, of red to this, even though it's not, it, it's not actually that color, there's still a sort of virtual potentiality of signifying it. And um, therefore, signification is going to be a relation between language and world, and yet, for logical reasons, he's going to be more interested in another relation, which is supposition. Supposition is the relation of a term to a thing understood as a term. It's the relation of a term to a thing qua term. And that is and there's in the subject or as predicate. And there's really three types of supposition. And this is going to be huge for his understanding of truth conditions. How you arrive at truth logically is largely through supposition. So the supposition can be personal. That is where the term stands for the thing in the sentence. It can be simple, in which the term stands for a mental term to which it's subordinated. Think of um, ideas like species is an example of a mental term. Or it can be material, in which a term stands in the sentence for itself. And the way that you arrive at truth, understanding truth conditions along the lines of supposition, is that when you have sentences like this level here, those can be categorical or they can be molecular. Now, you'll probably recognize these terms uh, even from like Kant. Um, a categorical sentence is, you know, composed of a subject, a predicate, and a copula, which really means in his system that a categorical sentence is two categorimatic terms and a copula. A classic example of a categorical 
statement is Socrates is, that's the copula mortal, uh, or Socrates is a man, whatever. Um, and the difference is that although a categorical sentence is composed of two categorimatic terms in a copula, a molecular sentence is composed of categorical sentences. So a molecular, we would call that today a hypothetical, something like if Socrates is a man, then Socrates is mortal. You can see how that's sort of a composite of categorical sentences, which is which are themselves composites of these terms, right? Sort of building up a, a higher uh, object out of having these um, nested categorical um, sentences within. And he's going to argue that therefore the molecular sentence is composed of two, at least two categorical sentences. And therefore, the um, simplest type of categorical sentences, and obviously when you're dealing with logic, there can be lots of different um, uh, variations, forms, right, um, which I don't quite have time to catalog everyone in this video, but I'll say uh, for a simplest example that the simplest categorical sentence is a discrete term, a common term, and a copula. Example of that is Socrates is a man. Right. Um, and the truth condition, therefore, is going to be based on supposition. If you remember, as I, I just mentioned in this video, the truth conditions based on supposition are going to be whether the terms supposit for the same thing. It's true, the statement is true, if you are able to have both terms supposit for the same thing. For example, you can even have more complicated types of statements um, a rabbit truth uh, along those criteria. For example, if you have a type of um, statement of every apple is a fruit, you have that as true if the uh, if the predicate supposits for everything that the subject does. You arrive at truth even with uh, complicated at the level almost literally we'd express with a quantifier. Um, to with every sum, etc., regarding on whether the supposition is um, going to satisfy the truth conditions. And therefore, you might be wondering, um, how does negation fit into this? Does he consider negation to be a logical operator? If you studied modern logic, you'd understand, like, the logical operator of the tilde. Um, does he consider that to be an operator? But instead, he actually, if you look at this formula of a categorical sentence, including a copula as one of its um, components, he's actually going to argue that a copula can come in two different um, varieties. Really, you can you have affirmative copulas and you have negative copulas, and he's able to handle negation not as an operator, but rather as one of the two sort of varieties that the copula will come in. The copula is, um, is, is, you know, to get Bill Clintonian um, on you, um, you know, the idea of you learn in, in your English grammar class to the extent that that's even taught, it's not even really taught anymore. You have this idea that um, you could say Spencer is a poet, Edmund Spencer, that is, and the copula, which is um, something which you have to treat differently than a normal transitive or intransitive verb. I guess they used to call this a linking verb. Its function within the sentence is not to express a an action like a, a verb normally would. It's rather to provide a joining between these terms. And he's going to argue that negation can be handled by considering the copula to be either is or is not. So that is the introduction to um, William of Ockham's logic. There will be more videos on this topic. And... Um, yeah, it should be exciting, so stay tuned.